Hey guys, your boy Versus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series. And in today's video we are going to be finishing up the end game screen and we are essentially going to be adding the functionality for the return to menu button. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making the return to menu button go back to the menu. So we're going to be setting up the level, we don't have a menu just yet but we're going to add the functionality so as soon as we have got a menu it's all going to work. And we're also going to be going over how to get the mouse cursor shown on the screen so the player can actually interact with a button click it and return to the menu so there's a few bits that we've got to take care of so let's just go ahead dive in and get started Cool, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that I need to do then for us to get our return to menu button working is I need to get the cursor actually showed on the screen so the player can actually interact with the button. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and open up my end screen and instead of being in the design view, I'm going to go to the graph view and basically when, as soon as this loads, I need to tell it to pretty much show the cursor on the screen and the way we're going to be doing that is we're going to be accessing a variable in the player controller that will allow us to you know just have it displayed on the screen and it's going to do it indefinitely so the thing is what we need to do then is we need to figure out exactly which player character uh, player controller the player is using uh, so the way we're going to do that is we're just going to go over to our world properties if you don't have it there already just go to window and then world settings and then just go to you know game modes over here and if it's set to nothing like it is now like it should be for the rest of the tutorial we are literally just going to be you know talking to the normal player controller now for those of you that don't know what the player controller is it's essentially you know the player controller it's the controls for the player it's going to handle things like um you know inputs from the mouse showing stuff on the screen that kind of stuff um so basically accessing and changing the variable to show the mouse cursor is actually pretty simple to do it all we got to do is cast to the you know player controller so we can actually interact with it and then all we got to do is as first person or no as player controller go ahead and type in set show mouse cursor and then just go ahead and toggle that to true when you do this it will you know show the mouse cursor as soon as this widget is sort of displayed on the screen really hook it up just like this and one more thing that we do need to do before it's going to work is under object the object world card just go ahead and drag that out and type in get player controller and this is pretty much just going to get the correct player controller and make sure it all works and that's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and press compile and save just to make sure this is all working and is all fine. So once I've done that, just go ahead and test it, press play, let yourself die, you know, go run around for a bit while you're debugging it. Once again, it's one of the many issues of debugging, you know, you got to sit there for a while and hope for, and just sort of wait and hope for you know to get whatever kind of result it is you're after really so i'm almost dead um if you don't want to wait around because i'm a lazy editor i'm not going to cut it out feel free to just go ahead and smack that like button on the video share the video and all of that cool stuff so i'm almost dead almost dead so it should only be a couple of seconds and hopefully we should see the mouse cursor displayed on the screen so almost there so Okay, that's great. So you can see I'm now dead. We've got the red vin a red vignette on the screen. It's looking great. And you can see I've got my mouse cursor. And whenever I go ahead and roll over this little button that we've got here, you can see it glows and that is looking great. So the next thing that we need to do then is we pretty much just need to add the functionality for the button to make it open up the, third, uh, the main menu level. So having said that, what we need to do then is we actually need to create a new level for our main menu just a normal empty level for now and then just go ahead and save this level so just go ahead and do save current and just go ahead and type in anything you like I'm just gonna call this main menu level for now and I'm gonna go ahead and save that so next thing that we need to do then is we need to go into our end game script uh, once again the same place as we did before just give it a couple of seconds to save and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the design view, we're going to click the button, and we are going to create a on-clicked event. So what this is going to do, it pretty much gives us an event, it's going to fire off whatever script we attach to it whenever the button is clicked. So basically what we want to do from here is we pretty much just want to tell it to open a level, just like that, and, and under the menu... Uh, and under the level name we just need to go ahead and set this to main menu level and make sure you've got it in the exact same spelling as you do the other one so hopefully this should have everything working now we don't necessarily have a main menu level at the moment so we do need to go ahead and 
test it. It's just going to be blank, but I mean, at least we're going to know the functionality is there. So I'm going to go into level one and I'm going to make sure I save everything that I work on because, you know, it's just best practice. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and press play in a couple of seconds. Give it a moment. Almost there. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And once again, I've just got to wait for the player to die. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some objects and all of that cool stuff. So, key, bit of wood, that'll do me. There you are, whoops. Okay, so it looks like I'm actually stuck in the ground, which is kind of cool. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to fix that you know, later down the right line. You guys probably don't have the exact same sort of setup in the terrain as I do, so it's probably not going to be an issue for you. Um, it's just an issue, just a, just a case of having to smooth out your terrain, really. Uh, so the player is almost dead now. Three, two, one, and boom. Cool. So we can press the button. That should be working just fine. And as soon as we press this button, it should freeze for a couple of seconds while it's loading the level, and then everything should go black. And there you are, that's all good. So you can see you've got the heads up display on there at the moment. You don't really need to worry about that too much as it's really, really easy to get rid of it. Um, we've just got to pretty much change the HUD class on the main menu level. It's pretty straightforward. Now that is going to be something that we are going to be going over when we're actually creating the main menu. I'm going to be creating a whole main menu Photoshop document complete with buttons to start the game, maybe some options and a few other bits and bobs as well. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And Hopefully you guys have got your button working and this is definitely a great place for me to end off the video. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you share the video, smack that like button, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.